Not too long ago, I created a video where I tested these six different types of garage door insulation. And as I did each of those, I tested the ability to retain or reduce essentially heat from the outside. And obviously with some applicability in the cold transmission as well, as well as what the cost was, the ease of installation, and what their R values for each one was. And in that test, I realized that doing the Owens Corning one inch formula NGX was actually the most efficient and easiest method for installation. It's pretty cost efficient. And so in this video, I'll be showing you a DIY method to not use the fiberglass insulation, which I think is very much inferior to what we get with inch and a half NGX that we're gonna install here. Now, just like with everything, make sure to test on your specific garage doors to see what your depth or thickness of panel should be. In my case, it's inch and a half, but I'm gonna use that inch and a half and show you how easy it is to install this. And within just a matter of minutes, get your garage door to where it's gonna do a great job at retaining your indoor temperature. But first, we gotta get all this stuff off. Not quite sure how I'm gonna get this stuff off. I think I'm gonna to have to scrape it, I guess. We'll see how this goes. Two thousand years later. Jeez. All right, that took way longer than I expected to get that spray foam panel cleared off. My goodness, what a nightmare. So don't do that. That is a real difficult one to remove. The process of cutting these down to size is super easy. You're going to need a blade of some sort. So I'm going to use my Milwaukee Fastback, which I love. Now this one doesn't go very deep. It's not going to go the full inch and a half. So I may need to use a longer blade as well. And then I'm going to use a T-square that I have from drywall. If you don't have that, then any square or straight edge will do. Uh, well, a straight edge, I should say. A square is nice to have, but a straight edge is even better and we're gonna use a marker to make our cuts. And one thing to keep in mind on these different panels here, they actually come pre-scored essentially. So if you look at the edge of these here, there's actually a little, um, you can see there's little scoring that happens. So all you really have to do is cut through the middle if you wanna cut these into three 16 inch sections, which is pretty nice. So I've got 16, 16, and 16. There's also a score right in the middle if you wanna break this down and actually just cut it in half, but that doesn't really apply to our scenario here. And with that said, let's jump in. I'm gonna use one of my other pieces as a surface piece here that I can sit on or kneel on. So this is actually a blade that I purchased for cutting rock wool insulation, which I've done all around the garage here and this is actually working out really well. So I'm just gonna use this instead. You can actually pick these up really inexpensively. I'll put a link to this one that I picked up on Amazon if you wanna get one of these for yourself. Definitely is making the job easier. And then 16 inches is unfortunately not the perfect height for these because if I look at my total size here, it's really about 17, almost 17 and a half, probably 17 and a quarter. So that's what I would ideally have these at but I'm going to use some spray foam to fill in the gaps on these to make sure that it seals all the way around and I don't have any air pockets left where the cold can just come through or the heat can just come through. Lesson learned here, as I'm going along, if I score it with a really sharp blade like this guy first and then use the longer blade to cut all the way through, it leaves a nice clean cut as opposed to some of the tearing that I'm getting if I just try to use the duller blade the whole time. It's not rocket science, it's not that surprising, but I thought maybe this would do just as good a job as far as just getting through it. But just at least start with a clean blade, even if a dull one is needed to get all the way through the rest of it. It's pretty quick. Okay, with that, we've got six panels cut out. That just took me a few minutes. That's what I love about this application is it's so fast. Now let's take a look at our fit and how these are gonna go. So my goal here is to not have to glue these in place. I wanna be able to use just a form fit and have them in there snug. But because of how some of these are cut, may or may not be feasible. We'll see how it goes. Okay, look at that. That is a good fit right there. Really good. It looks like it was meant for these panels to fit in, so that looks great. Now, one thing I'm noticing though, is I still am gonna have these gaps underneath and above, so that's where I'm gonna use some spray foam to fill those in. I've got it pretty solidly filled all the way into here. You can see it right through here through the holes, and then all the way up to this side. 
And so really that's all I've got is just the gaps right there and the gaps above. So that's where the spray foam will come in and then I'll put these in and then we should be good. It's just a matter of working through the process now. All right, that's looking pretty great. Onward and upward from here. So just a quick note that's going to save you a lot of time. I've seen a lot of people talk about taking out the bolts and screws out of here to basically not let those screws get caught on the face of the rigid foam board. I found that you typically don't need to do that. Usually what the hang up is is not those bolts, but it's a lip that's behind it. Basically all of these channels here that you see right back here are just a C. So it's like the letter C and pushed up against the door like this. And what's happening is the edge of your rigid foam board gets stuck on the lip of that C. So it can't quite squeeze in there. So all you need to do is actually just remove that lip from the foam board. And to do that, I'm just going to my sharp blade here again. There we go, that's it. So now I've just cut this little lip 90 degrees. It's not so abrupt. And it's got a little place where it can kind of slide in. And then these things will slide in so much easier when you do that. Okay, time for a bit of a confession. I made a mistake on this and I thought I would just continue on with it and make it right, but it's just not turning out good. So I'm gonna redo this. If you look behind me here, you can see that I've got these different insert panels that I put up because I didn't take the time. I just assumed everything was the same height, but it's not. These are definitely taller and I should have cut these at the proper height. So I instead tried to shim them essentially and it's just not gonna work. There's gonna be a gap there. It's gonna be inefficient. It doesn't look good. And so I just went and purchased a couple more panels to take care of that. So learn from my mistake, cut each one to the exact measurement of each panel, rather than just assuming that they're all the same. That was just a bad move on my part. I often wear this shirt that says, I only measure once and it's a joke, but kinda stuck my foot in my mouth on that one. So let me fix it now. We'll make these things look good both on the top and on the bottom. Those are taller panels. So I'll finish those and then we should be ready to go. And with that, the garage door is done. Now, I think you'll agree it looks really sharp because everything is nice and flush. We have our non-printed side facing out. And not only that, we have our R value of 7.5, which means that this is gonna do a great job at keeping this place cooler in the summers and warmer in the winters, especially if you have any sort of heating or cooling inside the garage. Now, this looks really good, but that's not the end of it. You wanna make sure to use some garage door seal all the way around the perimeter. And then if you need to, consider upgrading or replacing the seal along the bottom as well. These are all areas where heat and cool can escape and you wanna make sure to protect those as well. And then some foam seal around the outside will help to seal the outside perimeter as well. So those are things definitely to keep in mind. And as always, I'll put links to those in the description below if you wanna check out some good deals on some seals that you can get for your garage door to finish the job properly. Now, the last thing I wanna leave you with, and this is super important, is that we've just added weight to our garage door. 
Now with that, you wanna make sure that you're accommodating that by balancing the garage door. What that means is that we need to either add a little bit of tension to the garage door springs if it's just minimal weight that we've added, but if it's over maybe five, 10 pounds, you're probably gonna want to replace or upgrade those garage door springs, those torsion springs up above. Now you can have a garage door technician take care of this, but in next week's video, I'm gonna walk you through how to safely do this yourself and take all the necessary precautions to do a good job with this and hopefully save hundreds of dollars in the process. Now this works also if you have a broken garage door spring. Either way, you're gonna to wanna to make sure you get this balanced because if not, you're gonna shorten the life of your drive system and have to deal with that. Again, especially if you're doing more than like five or 10 pounds of weight on your garage door. So be sure to check that video out. I'll put that one right here as soon as it's ready. I'm Nils with Learn to DIY. Thanks for watching.